It was in the 1920s when living life was hard. The pitmen were on strike. There was no coal from the yard. They were cold and they were hungry, but their hearts were never down. Now I'll tell the tale of how they sent the Bromlot back to town. Men swam the cut day after day, dredging coal out of the mud. The police were on the prowl and would catch them if they could. But in the townships of the rich, for a high price coal was sold. So the Bromlot came with the light of dawn to steal the miners' gold. Sweet Phoebus dragged the day to life as on Badger's Bridge they stood. A dozen or more bold mining men were going to make things good. The Bromlot soon would reach this place to take ill-gotten gains. But today they would have to reckon with the King of Norton Canes. In his bowler hat and hobnailed boots, he stood scarce five feet tall. But John Mannering's regal bearing was known to one and all. He stood on the towpath, proud and bold, with cobbler Tom and Joel, and challenged the burly Bromlot that no further could they go. The king gave out his challenge, and eager to impress, drew himself to his fullest height, and smote his feeble chest. You trespass in my kingdom, I command you to get out. Like hell we will, their leader cried, I'll chuck you in the cart. Cobbler Jennings stepped behind the king and lifted him like a child. He placed him gently on the grass, and everybody smiled. With a scornful look to their leader, try me then, Cobbler said, and the burly man aimed a swinging blow at little Cobbler's head. But Cobbler was a boxing man, his prowess was renowned. With two short jabs the brummy was sprawling on the ground. His second lunge with flailing fists was met with a left to the gut. The third one cobbler sidestepped and his foe fell in the cart. They dragged him from the water with a bucket jammed on his head. But as they pulled it off him he saw the sky glow red. The lorries are fire, one brummy cried, and they raced back up the path. How the miners laughed at the trick they played with some brushwood and a match. But in their haste the brummies left a wheelbarrow behind, where sandwiches and a crate of beer the miners then did find. Let the victors claim the spoils, they cried, their losses are our gains. So they drank a toast to Cobbler and the King of Norton Canes. The King of Norton Canes, oh, the King of Norton Canes. They drank a toast to Cobbler and the King of Norton Canes. Wimbledon by name, 
the town was built for mining men My characters too were many of them I'll sing a song of fame Now tell of old Ben Suffolk He'd drink and smoke all night But he stood five foot off the ground And his wife was tall and six feet round And she held the first strings tight But he'd pinch the tea from a caddy and he'd mix it with his shag He'd stuff it in his pipe and set it alight It'd last him right on through the night And were cheaper than any fag Holy city Wimbledon by name The town was built for mining men My characters too were many of them I'll sing of some of fame Jack Bath was a man we a got so big He could stop it full and snap Then he chewed tobacco and drink his beer Never once did it make him feel queer And he gave us all a laugh Holy city Wimbledon by name The town was built for mining men My characters too were many of them I'll sing of some of fame They stole into a country church that nobody was minding. This church, says Mick, I'll tell you, Pat, this church it took some finding. They scooped together all they could and then prepared to sloop. When Patty cried, so help me, Mick, what shall we do for a rope? We've got no bag to hold the swag, and ere we go outside, with something strong and stiff, me lad, this bundle must be tied. Just then he saw the church bell rope, and mentioned it to Mick, that's fine by me, his mate cried out, it sure should do the trick. So like a sailor, up he went up to the belfry high, Till Mick cried out, there's plenty there, for mercy's sake, let's fly. Then hanging by one arm and leg, he pulled his clasp knife out, and right above his arms and head, he cut that rope so stout. He quite forgot it held him up, and by the holy pole, down to the bottom of the church came Paddy and the rope. Cried Mick to Pat, come out of that as down there he lay groaning. If that's the way that cuts the rope, no wonder that you're moaning. I'll show thee how to cut a rope, so just lend me the knife. Be careful, Mick, cried out Pat, or else you'll lose your life. Mick scrambled up the other rope, and like an artful thief, Instead of cutting off above, he cut it underneath. There on poor Mick up in the roof, Pat groaning on the floor. What next then did the pair expect? What help could they hope for? Just then in came the parson, the sexton and police. Instead of getting off with swag, the pair had no release. It's Saturday night and with nowhere to go I've a tanner in my pocket and sold me mate Joe Tim's got a shilling and a new suit, you know So we go to the weekly hop So out of my first week's wages I bought me a packet of fags Joe did the same and some matches We felt like a couple of swags But Tim kept his hands in his pockets He'd hang on to his cash, there's no doubt So let's go to Heath Hayes and see for ourselves These dance halls they all talk about it's Saturday night and we've nowhere to go I've a tanner in my pocket and so's my mate Joe Tim's got a shilling and a new suit, you know So we'll go to the weekly hop We 
we didn't know much about dancing. It's the truth, we knew nothing at all. But we knew it was where the wenches would be, and we thought we could have us a ball. Well, the first place we reached was the church institute, and the music rang out loud and clear. So we said to the man at the door there, who looked at us rather quite queer. It's Saturday night and we've nowhere to go, I've a tanner in my pocket and so's my mate Joe. Tim's got a shilling and a new suit, you know, so we'll go to the weekly hop. Carolina Moon was playing. How much to get in then, asked Tim. Gentlemen, nine pence, ladies, just six. We don't close till half past eleven. We checked our financial position as we laid out our cash on a bench. We ain't got enough, one and seven, that's tough. Can't you count each of us as a wench? Cause it's Saturday night and we've nowhere to go. I've a tanner in my pocket and so's my mate Joe. Tim's got a shilling and a new suit, you know, so we'll go to the weekly hop. We left the church hall far behind us. And out in the darkness we strode. At last we could all see the labour hut at the end of Gorse Moor Road. There were ladies in long pretty dresses and men dressed up to the nines. On a table there rested a barrel of beer and sandwiches laid out so fine. Cause it's Saturday night and we've nowhere to go I've a tanner in my pocket and so's my mate Joe Tim's got a shilling and a new suit you know So we'll go to the weekly hop But this was a wedding reception Our long walk had all been for now Then the groom with a grin invited us in Gave us food and glasses of stout in an evening of heady enlightenment, we learned how to eat, drink and dance, and agreed that we'd do it again next week, if only they'd give us the chance. Cause it's Saturday night and we've nowhere to go I've a tanner in my pocket and so be mate Joe Tim's got a shilling and a new suit, you know So we'll go to the weekly, go to the weekly, go to the weekly hop A miner was leaving his home for his work When he heard his little child scream he went to the bedside, the side of his lad. Oh, Daddy, I've had such a dream. I dreamt I saw the pit all on fire and men struggling hard for their lives. The scene it then changed to the top of the mine. T'was surrounded by sweethearts and wives. Don't go down in the mine, Dad. Dreams very often come true. Daddy, you know it would break my heart if anything happened to you. Go and tell my dream to your mate, for as true as the stars will shine. Something is going to happen today. Dear Daddy, don't go down the mine. The miner, a man with a heart good and kind, sat by the side of his son. He said, it's my living, I can't stay away, for duty my lad must be done. The little one looked up and sadly he said, Oh, please stay with me today, Dad. 
But as the brave miner went full to his work, he heard this appeal from his lad. Don't go down in the mine, Dad. Dreams very often come true. Daddy, you know it would break my heart if anything happened to you. Go and tell my dream to your mates, for as true as the stars will shine. Something is going to happen today, dear Daddy, don't go down the mine. Whilst waiting his turn with his mates to descend, he could not banish his fears. As he returned home to his wife and his child, those words seemed to ring through his ears. And ere the day ended, the pit was on fire, and a score of brave men lost their lives. He thanked God above for the dream of his child, for once again the little one cried. Don't go down in the mine, Dad. Dreams very often come true. Daddy, you know it would break my heart if anything happened to you. Go and tell my dream to your mate, for as true as the stars will shine. Something is going to happen today, dear Daddy, don't go down the mine. As the mist swirls round the old pit mound, ghostly figures waxed and waned, a silhouette Looms dark and gaunt, the bones of the pit heads frame. As the breeze sighed in the leafless trees, the mist lay thick as snow. You could hear the tread of the miners' clogs as they walked the roads below. Could it be the ghost of those mining men That died in days gone by? Could it be the spirits of our ancestors The forebears of you and I? If they could implant in today's men's hearts Their pride in their native land then alone we could stand together strong, the English working man. As the dense mist floats as high as your knees, and your boots are hid from view, the ghostly creak of a wheel on steel can be heard deep under you. Are these the clouds of the heavens of yore, or smoke from the devil's flame? Or from the crackling fires on the spoiled tip, stoked by men with forgotten names? Could it be the ghost of those mining men that died in days gone by? Could it be the spirits of our ancestors, the forebears of you and I? If they could implant in today's men's heart their pride in their native land, then alone we could stand together strong, the English working man. As the watery moon broke through the mist and sank behind the mound, from the hazy dark came an eerie noise, the hoot of a hunting owl. The church bell tolled the witching hour for the soulful hollow knell, and the ghostly tread of clouds.
clocks could be heard from the miners in their hell. Could it be the ghost of those mining men who died in days gone by? Could it be the spirit of our ancestors, the forebears of you and I? If they could implant in today's men's hearts their pride in their native land, then alone we could stand together strong, the English working man. Yes, if they could implant in today's men's hearts their pride in their native land, then alone we could stand together strong, the English working man. Drinking Job is beer, oh, drinking Job is beer. What a way to spend a Saturday night, drinking Job is beer. It happened every Saturday night, on the stroke of eight. Old Joby arrived at the miners' arms, he was never a minute late. His two quart pots he would fill to the brim, then homeward he would steer, and pass the rest of the night away, drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, oh, drinking Joby's beer, and pass the rest of the night away, drinking Joby's beer. Yeah. He'd get back home, he'd light a lamp, a candle in a jar. By the flickering light of a good coal fire, he'd sit back in his chair. On the stone hearth slab one quart pot sat, and mould in the warming air, while he dreamed of days that had long gone by, drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, or oh, drinking Joby's beer, while he dreamed of days that had long gone by, drinking Joby's beer. As he made his way through the second quart, his eyes began to close. He tried to sing a song or two, then he began to doze. Whilst through his holy curtains, three lads began to peer. They were waiting the chance to pass the night, drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, oh, drinking Joby's beer. They were waiting the chance to pass the night, drinking Joby's beer. They saw him yawn as his head slumped back. He began to snore. Gently the lads lifted up the latch and tiptoed through the door. But Joby knew that for weeks these three had sneaked their way in here. They thought they'd made a fool of him drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, oh, drinking Joby's beer. They thought they'd made a fool of him, drinking Joby's beer. But tonight he wasn't sleeping, he'd feigned this little nap. He sprang to his feet and walloped them with the edge of his old pit strap. When he thrust each one, he kicked them out and sank back in his chair. And he passed the rest of the night away, drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, oh, drinking Joby's beer. And he passed the rest of the night away, drinking Joby's beer. 
These three lads staggered back to the homes, the tales they had to tell. For the dads and mums could see that they weren't looking very well. So the dads all met, and they agreed that the punishment was fair. And they reckoned it would stop all three from drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, or oh, drinking Joby's beer. They reckoned it would stop all three from drinking Joby's beer. Drinking Joby's beer, or oh, drinking Joby's beer. What a way to spend a Saturday night. Drinking Joby's It was in the town of Wimblebury in 1927 John Wilkes and William Harrison gave little thought to heaven But in that little mining town as the pit cage flew on down the hand of death was knocking at their doors Ten days we all had been laid off The pit had been closed down Times were hard for man and lad In that little mining town with new engines on the winding gear We couldn't wait another hour It was back to work for every man and boy Twenty men packed in the cage As it started the first run the bell rang clear, and in the inky darkness we did plunge. The dark shaft walls flew by, black coal became our sky. Then the engine slowed and our hearts fell to our knees. The coal dust cleared and all went quiet They opened up the gates One by one we'd stepped out and chatted to our mates Firemen took our lamps to test One by one they all were passed While the men on top we're filling the next cage Nineteen men went down on the second trip As the empty cage arose What happened next was never proved It seems nobody knows The cages ran too fast the top one hit the snaps At the bottom men were battered to their knees Now little Jimmy Higgins He was but a tiny lad The first to be pulled out He was looking pretty bad Les Hill had broke both legs Ray Guy had cracked his thigh We laid them in the dust midst corn and hay Five men escaped uninjured But many broke their backs as John Wilkes and William Harrison were laid against the tracks 
For these two lay side by side Until in hospital they died At least they never knew hard times again It was in the town of Wimblebury in 1927 John Wilkes and William Harrison gave little thought to heaven But in that little mining town as the pit cage flew on down the hand of death was knocking at their doors But at least they never knew hard times again. If you were a Wimblebury Bulldog puppy, you'd be fed three times a day. In heat haze you got but one meal, your hunger to allay. The general strike was past and gone, but the miners struggled on and on. They dug for coal for a winter fire, which scarcely dried the damp and mire. The cash they had bought little meat, and they had no shoes for the children's feet. If you were a Wimblebury bulldog pup, you'd be fed three times a day. In heat haze you got but one meal, your hunger to allay. But the Education Act, it said, that at times like this, Children must be fed, so in mining towns across the chase, the kids with their knife, fork, spoon and plate would line up as they'd been told to do, as they all joined in the soup kitchen queue. If you were a Wimblebury bulldog puppy, you'd be fed three times a day. In heat haze you got but one meal, your hunger to allay. Soup kitchens sprung up everywhere at the back of a pub, in the village square, in the open streets and the church hall too. Children would go for a bowl of stew. Or cake and cocoa could be their treat, it kept them alive and on their feet. If you were a Wimblebury bulldog pup, you'd be fed three times a day. In heat haze you got but one meal, your hunger to allay. The food for the meals came from everywhere, from folks with cash, from folk who care. And every day at the dinner time bell, all the kids had the chance to eat their fill. Unless you lived in Wimblebury, there you got breakfast, dinner and tea. If you were a Wimblebury bulldog puppy, you'd be fed three times a day. In heat haze you got but one meal, your hunger to allay. The brown of the bracken, the yellow of the gorse, the purple of the heather, that flanks the Sherbrooke's course The silver birds, the stately oak The pine tree standing tall The chance to view such beauty On man to seldom fall Penkridge with its market Milford with its hills 
Where a brisk walk in the clean fresh air is enough to cure all ills. Mechanic chases more than pits that produce the finest coal. For this glorious work of nature is manna to the soul. The brown of the bracken, the yellow of the gorse, the purple of the heather, the flanks the sherbrooke's course, the silver birds, the stately old. The pine tree standing tall, the chance to view such beauty, a man does seldom fall. If you stand at Spring Hill, Milford, and cast your gaze afar, to north and south on a clear day, you'll see thirty miles or more. The clee hills to the southward With the Brockton Road before And Ipston's Edge and Morridge On the skyline to the north The brown of the bracken The yellow of the gorse The purple of the heather that flanks the Sherbrooke's course The silver birds, the stately oak The pine tree standing tall The chance to view such beauty A man does seldom fall But go to Wandon Crossroads Walk up Wandon Hill on a clear day, I will guarantee that you'll see for further still. Across the Chase and Staffordshire, Shropshire and Warwick too. Into Leicestershire and Derby, it makes such a splendid view. The brown of the bracken. Yellow of the gorse, the purple of the heather that flanks the Sherbrooke's course, the silver birds, the stately oak, the pine tree standing tall, the chance to view such beauty on man to seldom. The deer amongst the bracken, the hare and rabbit too. The grouse that used to shout, go back, as you strolled into view. The curlew's dismal wailing, the vixen's strangled scream, and the peaceful water rippling. In a clear and sparkling stream The brown of the bracken The yellow of the gorse The purple of the heather That flanks the Sherbrooke's course The silver birch, the stately oak The pine tree standing tall the chance to view such beauty, a man to seldom fall. No, the chance to view such beauty, a man to seldom Tell you now the tale of a man, the smallest style was grand. 
His bloody dab, you know, was linked to the rulers of this land. With his faithful Mongol Satan, he'd walk the leafy lanes and expect you to pay homage to the king of Norton Keynes. His family name was Mannering, John Thomas he was named, but he was known in the coalfields as the king of Norton Keynes. He'd ride on public transport and never pay the fare. For royalty had a right, he claimed, to travel anywhere. At the village dance or the yearly wakes, the tale was just the same. Cause royalty never uses cash, said the King of Norton Keynes. His family name was Mannering, John Thomas he was named. But he was known in the coalfields as the King of Norton Keynes. In he pays at the five ways in, he called for a glass of beer, and straight of face told the landlord, I will pay with stamps in here. He downed his pint right swiftly, said his payment he'd explain, he stamped his foot on the quarry floor, did the King of Norton Keynes. His family name was Mannering, John Thomas he was named. But he was known in the coalfields as the King of Norton Keynes. But he lived the life of a hermit in a van high up Chase Knob. He had no cash to pay his rent, for he had no proper job. He'd left his wife and his family, and his heart was full of pain. In 1938, he died, the King of Norton Keynes. His family name was Mannering, John Thomas he was named, but he was known in the coalfields as the King of Norton Keynes. His family name was Mannering, John Thomas he was named, but he was known in the coalfields as the King of Norton Keynes.